Today we're driving the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado High Country. This is the top trim for the Silverado and has something that I'm very excited to test out and show you guys. Today it has Super Cruise. This is actually the first vehicle I've ever driven with proper full-on Super Cruise. I did drive a Chevy Bolt EUV last year, but it was kind of a diluted version of Super Cruise. So really excited to show you what this truck can do this week on the highway. This has the 6.2 liter V8, making 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. That's mated to a 10-speed automatic. We get a two-speed transfer case with an automatically locking rear differential on this. Get two high, four high, four low. A few different drive modes. Normal, sport, off-road. There's a tow haul mode. Let's walk you around this truck. We'll talk about what it's like inside and out, what it's been like to live with, and then we'll take it for a drive and give you guys some driving impressions. Automatic running boards are nice and quick. We've got 22 inch aluminum painted wheels, crew cab, short bed, and a new active exhaust for the 2024 model year. On cold starts, this thing sounds actually pretty gnarly. Kind of sounds like a sport truck. I haven't spent a ton of time in the new Silverado, except for the Trail Boss and the ZR2. And I wasn't blown away by those two trims, but this is actually very, very nice. If you're looking for a truck that is almost bordering on a luxury vehicle, this high country is really, really close. Interior materials, quite nice. Got some storage behind the seats. Of course, underneath the seats too. Just pull those down. Tons of space in the back. Five foot ten. I mean, I almost have too much room back here. Not gonna complain about it though. Little cup holder. Heated seats. Super simple and easy to use controls all throughout. The infotainment is fast. The Bose sound system sounds fantastic. I like the design in here. Everything seems to work well. This has Google built in, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Here's what your bed looks like. It's going to tow about 9,300 pounds in this package. We get the spray in bed liner. You can either lift up the tailgate yourself or just press the button and it'll auto lift. Cool looking exhaust tips here. They're not quite real, but they look sharp. This step here is really nicely placed. Little grab handle makes getting up into the bed super easy. Not a bad looking truck. Let's take a look at the 6.2 liter V8. Rated for 15 miles to the gallon in the city. 20 on the highway for about a 17 MPG combined rating. The venerable 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 V8. Sounds great, pulls great. Awesome engine to have with your Silverado if you can swing the extra money for it. All right, so we'll just briefly go over this interior. This is your Super Cruise light up here. You notice when we turned on the vehicle, the system kind of came on. There's probably some sensors here that I can't see with my naked eye that will be flashing purple infrared lights. Uh, the camera's gonna pick that up. I can't see that. So, you know, when you're driving around, that's not gonna be a distraction. Steering wheel controls, everything is super simple, easily laid out. We get paddle shifters behind the wheels. Audio controls on the right, track selection controls on the left as little kind of almost paddles, very useful. Indicator stock, wiper controls, all here on this left stock. All of your uh, drive selections are over here on the left too, including your transfer case, drive modes, tow haul modes, 
lighting settings, all physical controls. You can adjust your head-up display right here too. Lots of places to put things, cubbies, wireless phone charging right here. A massive center console with tons of storage. We get both USB type A and USB C ports in the Silverado. Heated, ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel. And you can heat your backrest and your bum, which is great. Climate control knobs, dials, doesn't get any easier than that. Quick access controls here to turn on and off. Stop start, parking sensors, lane keep assist. Yeah, all very, very nice. And then there is a constant icon here on the infotainment for your camera view button, which I, it's the only other thing I wish were a physical button, like maybe right there or something, but that's okay. It's in the infotainment and you can see this is a lightning fast screen. Love the quickness of operation here. Google Maps is the native navigation here in the Silverado, as we've seen in a lot of new GM products. It works great. Part of me does kind of prefer a column shifter in a truck like this, and I have struggled a little bit with using this shifter this week, but once you get used to it, it's like a lot of other GM shifters. It's just kind of push forward to go in reverse, pull back to go into drive, and it's simple enough once you get the hang of it. Here's what our reverse and 360 cameras look like. Nothing too special there. They get the job done. Would be nice if they used all the screen real estate, but that's okay. Constant home button right here, which is nice if you're in CarPlay. Also, just constant icons to the left of the screen. This is how you do a modern infotainment. I think Jim did a great job designing this new infotainment system. Fully digital gauge cluster here. Tack. Uh, graphics look a little bit funky. They're kind of difficult to read, but everything else is clear enough. You've got your trip selection. Lots of different options there. You can see tire pressure, driving assistance settings, brake pad life, more information. See music, navigation, more in-depth settings too. I think we'll just kind of leave it right there on speed. And I think that's a pretty good walk around. Let's go for a drive and see what Super Cruise is like on the road and see how this Silverado High Country handles. <laughs> 6.2-liter V8 sounds awesome. Makes good power too. This thing almost handles like a sport truck. It's got pretty good road manners and pretty good performance. And with the new valved exhaust for 2024, I think it finally sounds proper. My biggest disappointment with the ZR2 that I drove about a year and a half ago was that it just didn't sound good enough. And it sounds perfect. This is great. This is what I want out of a Chevy truck with a 6.2 V8. I want to be able to hear that V8. All right, let's take this around some corners, see how it handles for a truck. We can select our own gears in low mode. shifters. <laughs> They're merely a suggestion. Oh, this V8 sounds fantastic. And it sounds even better from the outside. Brake pedal gives me a lot of confidence in this truck stopping ability. That's nice. Brakes felt a little bit weaker than I would have liked on the ZR2. This is an improvement. Super smooth shifts from this 10-speed auto. This week I've gotten the occasional rough bump into second, but otherwise this gearbox is just buttery smooth. Makes pretty good decisions on its own when downshifting uses the torque of this 6.2 liter V8 nicely. All right, let's 
see all those handles. We're in sport mode. We do have adaptive suspension on this truck. Should give us a bit better handling here. As well as relax the stability control in sport mode. Yeah. <laughs> Great. For a truck, that's some pretty good handling back there. All right, back into normal. Cruise control, super easy buttons to use here on the steering wheel. You can change your following distance, gap adjust, all right, let's engage Super Cruise. It's taken it a minute to kind of figure out where we are, but you can see there's a steering wheel icon right here on the head-up display and in the gauge. Press that, and the truck will drive itself on the highway. It'll even pass slower traffic. It's, it's pretty amazing. Let's show you what it looks like when we, it tries to navigate around this semi-truck up here. It stays perfectly centered between the lines. This is an amazing, amazing driving assistance system. I think out of everything that I've tested and driven, it's the best. It's been just flawless this week, except for occasionally taking a little bit of time to figure out that we're on the highway, that we're on a, a main road. It's worked flawlessly. It, it knows when you're taking your attention off the road. Um, right now it's performing an auto lane change around the semi-truck, didn't slow down at all. How cool is that? That's just, that was what threw me for a loop at first. I couldn't believe that it was auto lane changing around slower traffic. <laughs> I wonder if we'll get over. All you have to do is just keep your eyes looking forward. Look at that, a truck with lane etiquette. That is amazing, guys. Keep your eyes looking forward and the truck will keep driving. If you look off for a second, look over here, it'll sense that and it'll cancel. And of course, you can always just cancel it quickly on your own by pressing the brake pedal or pressing the steering button right there. It's very clear when everything's active with the steering wheel lights. It's super easy to engage and disengage. I love everything about the Super Cruise. And the Silverado, I think. Oh man, GM just knocked it out of the park. Let's turn around. We'll go back and do it again. It won't work on a lot of back roads. However, sometimes it does. And you can see when we engage that, what that looks like here. Navigating these corners beautifully. It's a 55 mile an hour two lane road. We're gonna negotiate a left-hand turn here. And as soon as we do, the system will engage. If it ever gets confused or thrown off a little bit, It'll engage or disengage very quickly, which is great. Let's hit resume here. Wait for that steering wheel icon to come up you can engage it. The truck will know if you're on an exit lane of the highway, so it'll sense, you know, turn off Super Cruise if you're in that lane. Using GPS to get all this done and figured out is brilliant. back in action here. Super Cruise engaged. I mean, I drove all the way from Plymouth to Ypsilanti on M14 the other day, and 
I would just keep my hands right here next to the steering wheel in case if I needed to take over. Never once did I need to. I was maybe driving 20 miles on the highway and the car just drove itself. It was amazing. And same thing today. <laughs> I haven't used it in heavy traffic. So I'm not sure how it navigates lane changes and figures out cars around it. Let's see what it does with this X5 in front of us. All right, it's gonna lane change back over, that's cool. It gives you a little vibration in the seat too, telling you which way it's gonna go. You can always cancel that by hitting the uh, cruise, you know, cruise control stock or hitting the turn signal stock and it won't lane change. A very simple and just highly effective driving assistance system. This is, this is awesome. This is how it should be. So right now, it's X5 swerving on its phone. Traffic is passing us. Let's see what the vehicle decides to do. We're set to the closest following distance. After this truck, it'll probably signal to pass. bump us up to 80 and then it's going to look for an opening. All right. I think if the speed differential is high enough between your set desired speed and the car in front of you, it'll try to get around that vehicle. Eating a bagel. We get to drive a lot of cool stuff with this gig. This is one of the coolest things I've I've ever experienced behind the wheel. It just works so, so well. Very rarely do I put a lot of trust in these systems. I'm always just kind of, and eh, they work okay, they work well enough to use for a little bit. But I've been using this on every single drive and I've been trusting it and kind of putting a little bit of uh, faith in it and, it hasn't really let me down at all, all week. Now, if you want to lane change manually, like I want, want to let this guy around behind me, I did a pretty good job with that. Hovering my foot over the accelerator just in case, but he got over, slowing traffic down. The truck got around him pretty well. see if it figures this out here. That RAV4 was coming around us, it sensed it, so it didn't lane change over, but once it passed, there it goes. I'll just kind of cover the wheel here just in case since we're on a corner. Cool. I'm not having to touch anything, guys. This is just, this is insane. <laughs> Will it get back over? When your Chevy Silverado High Country is a better driver than most on the road, just because it has lane etiquette, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, maybe because this is a three lane road, it's not gonna get over. But if I wanted it to, just hit the turn signal, and we change lanes. It's a nice and slow lane change too. It's not like the BMW X7 that was just like swerving between lanes. <laughs> cool, all right, well, while we're just cruising the rest of the way, let's listen to this Bose sound system here. You can see as I was taking my eyes off the road, looking at the screen, it was flashing to notify me to pay attention. 
It's smart. It knows what you're doing. of the Bose sound system too. I've enjoyed it this week. This truck makes for a pretty good sound space and uh, yeah not the clearest system out there but it gets the job done and sounds pretty nice for the price point in my opinion. Oh yeah speaking of pricing kind of forgot to mention that earlier on in the video on the walk around the High Country Silverado this trim short bed crew cab starts around $66,000. This has a little bit over $10,000 worth of options. So $77,800 as tested here. I feel like about every truck we've driven recently has been over $70,000. This is one of the few that might actually be worth it, especially with Super Cruise. Pretty late to the game and testing Super Cruise. <laughs> If I'm being honest, it's been out for a while, but I've heard nothing but good things, and it is just so impressive. And I, I really like this truck too. This the 6.2 liter V8 in this high country, it just drives so nice. It handles well. It feels like a very refined, luxurious truck to, to live with. This V8 is responsive economical too for what it is and if you just want a truck to do truck things that's a great daily kind of hard to beat this is our bumpy section of road here taken without drama A sporty Silverado to drive. It feels light. It feels nimble. It feels agile. And it is kind of light. It's about a little under 5,100 pounds curb weight. But it's very willing to turn in and leapfrog around corners. For a truck, the handling here is, is quite good. There's some harsher impacts, sure. But, I think the compromises are few and far between. Especially with having these larger, larger wheels, skinnier tires. You can still tow a good amount. I don't know if you can get the max tow package and Super Cruise as an option. I haven't delved too deep into the options of the Silverado. Oh, Savage Geese trying to cross the road. I'm thinking about it. One 
alpha goose is on the lookout. Yeah. And I'm pretty impressed with the way this just rides. Over bumps, it's so smooth, so refined. There's very little NVH transferred into the cabin. You just kind of drive this, you hear the V8 in the background, a little bit of wind noise, that's about it. This is definitely my favorite Silverado that I've driven to date. Chris and Charlie from Daily Motor had one of these about a year ago and they just couldn't stop raving about it and I, I can see why. It's fantastic. This high country is um, really, really impressive. So I like all the physical switch gear, all the controls here. I mean, this, this feels modern and high tech. This is a beautiful time of year to drive on Heinz. Colors are just about to start getting really, really good. It's mid-October right now at the time of filming this. And it is a good time to be in Michigan. Cool. All right, guys, there's a drive in the Chevy Silverado High Country with Super Cruise. I'm excited to test some more vehicles with Super Cruise from GM, from Cadillac. Uh, this is a truly impressive system, and I think it's one of the things that makes this truck very impressive uh, to me after driving it all week. So anyway, we'll end on that note. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh, one more thing before we wrap up the video, active exhaust. So here's normal mode. Here's sport mode. Yeah, that's more like it. That sounds just so good. That's a pleasure. <laughs> Wanna get a couple photos of this here. We'll go drive this just a little bit more.
All right, that'll be it for this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.